In addition, we will be asking the board to make, take immediate action tonight in the reinstating the parent center positions that were held by Dolores Mason and Lisa Pavlich that were eliminated yeah. last year. These positions were eliminated in anticipation of a new model being proposed to replace the services they provided. In six months, we have yet to see a proposal, let alone the implementation of any such plan. As communication is key to ensuring a student success, the parent center needs more resources, not less, and the downsizing of the center has had an immediate and dramatic impact on parent involvement in our school system. Ms. Mason and Ms. Pavlich's positions were entirely funded by grants, and these layoffs resulted in absolutely no savings for Bridgeport taxpayers. Bringing them back will send a clear message to parents that their input is valued and that they must have a seat at the table on any policy decision that affects their child. We hope that the new board will take immediate action on this issue. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Mary Lee Taylor, and Bridgeport parent. Good evening. Yeah. My name is Mary Lee Taylor, and I'm a parent of a child that attends Black Rock Elementary School. At Black Rock Elementary, I also serve as the president of the Parent Advisory Council. I'm on the Governance Council, and I also serve on the District Executive PAC as an elected treasurer. At this time, I'd like to join with the teachers of Bridgeport in calling that the restoration of the parent center positions held by Dolores Mason and Lisa Pavlich. Over the past few years, I've had the privilege of working with both of these dedicated professionals on many topics in which I needed educational advice. The evidence is clear that children whose parents take an active interest in their studies are far more likely to learn high, at higher grades, develop better social skills, and move on to graduation, and then attend college. One of the many responsibilities of Dolores and Lisa was to help ensure that schools build partnerships to, to respond with families and partner concerns and share decision-making responsibilities. Simply put, since June, when these positions were eliminated, we've been moving backwards instead of forward in the parent involvement. The new Board of Education has the ability to reserve this harm to reverse I'm sorry, this harmful policy decision tonight by voting to bring back Lisa and Dolores, two committed and loyal workers. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you have all good evening. Just the next speaker I'd like to introduce is one of the people who was active in making this election and defeating the charter last year, former state senator from the East End, Ernie Newton. But so you guys have gone yeah. inside. Let me, let me first congratulate you for this. Well, I hope that one of your first businesses is to hold the city accountable. If Bridgeport can find money for drivers, then they can find money for children. I support the two parents going back because it's about children. And that's what the fight is about. It's about protecting rights, but also protecting our children. And so you can't say you're for education, but yet you don't fund education at the level it should be funded. Then you can't be for education if you can't do that. So I would hope the board does some creative things. Support the teachers, support the parents, but also make sure that our city keeps its commitment to our children. It's not just the state's job to fund education. It's the city's job to make sure that education is funded right. And that when it is funded, that those dollars go to the children who need it the most. So I would hope that thank you, thank you, Jane, and a lot of people have fought to make sure that our rights will be protected.
protected, that the people of Bridgeport are smart enough to know, vote for who they want to put on the board, and that we live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. Thank you.